I finally get a job, making a buck an hour, and then this bug hits me. And I go to the boss, and I says, look, I'm too sick to work. Would you hold down this spot for me, please? But he just stands there and shakes his head and says, sorry, buddy, that's life. No, I don't dig that. When things get real tough, people always say that's life. Is that life, Gilby? I don't know, son. I haven't lived yet. When are you going to start, Gilby? Tomorrow. You always start tomorrow. Don't you know that? Not me, brother. I always want to start right now, today. Look, son, you've been bending my ear for two solid hours now. Couldn't you maybe just uh, sort of shut up? But I've been sick for a whole week. I've been lying in that broken down shack of mine all by myself. There was no one to talk to. So now you're caught up. Yeah, but I want to talk, can't you see? Did you ever hear of a guy that was just hungry for people? Yeah. Cannibals. Cannibals. Hey, Pop, how about loan of a buck? I'm not allowed to, son. Look, I got a contract with the bank next door. I don't loan no money. They don't sell no liquor. I heard that when I was two. Hmm. Start mooching early, huh? Thanks for the smoke, Pop. You know, this is the first one I had in a whole week. Can I help you, miss? I just want to use the phone. Well, there's somebody in there now. I can see. You want me to drag him out for you? No. Hey, how come you pick a crummy joint like this to make a phone call in? The only place I could find around here was a phone. Who are you calling? I'll bet it's a boyfriend, huh? My parents. They always worry when I'm not back on time. In the daytime, too? <laughs> you know how parents are. Aren't your parents living? Oh, I don't know. I guess so. Hey, what's your name? Excuse me. Say, I bet they're glad you're alive, huh? Yes, they are. So am I. Please, let me go. You know, you got a neat little figure there. I bet your hair crackles, too, when you run a comb through it. Huh? I have to go now, please. I still have some shopping to do. Well, what for? You got everything. Please. What's it feel like to have everything and be a somebody? What makes you think I'm a somebody? Well, you look like somebody. You got all those good clothes, and you got parents that worry about you, got money in your purse. Now, I bet you live in a big house, big as a hotel, don't you? I have to do something for my mother. She's going to a big party tonight. And you're going too, aren't you? All dressed up, silk and high heels, and you'll be dancing with all those rich young snobs. No, I'm not going, but if you don't move out of my way... Then what if I don't, huh? <sighs> Come on, now. Hey, what are you crying for? I didn't do nothing. I was just trying to... Please, let me back. Hey, I want to explain. I was only kid. What goes on here? Uh, I was only kidding her, and I wanted to explain. <laughs> Some of them ain't got no sense of humor, son. What, Mother? Coming home so late. But I phoned you from downtown. Oh, that was hours ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I took a walk in the park. It's such a beautiful day. I don't much like you taking walks in the park, dear. It's full of, well, not very nice people. They don't seem unnice to me, Mother. Darling, you're too young to understand certain things. You just have to take my word for it. Yes. You like my new gown? It's beautiful. Hello, Father. Miranda. How are you, dear? Darling. Daughter? Wilson, you like my new dress? Love it. Why, you're the most exciting-looking woman. Uh, oh, darling, please. Is this what you're going to wear tonight? Mm -hmm. Think the mayor might be impressed? Mm -hmm. If he doesn't forget his glasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello? Yes, Miranda. Who is this, please? Oh, uh, just a moment. It's for you, dear. Thank you. Who is it? He wouldn't give his name. Hello? 
Who? Oh. Well, just drop it in the mailbox, please. No, you can't. I don't want you to. Just mail it, please. What was that? Nothing, Mother. What do you mean, nothing? Darling, you mustn't have secrets. We're your parents. Well, it's really nothing, Father. I, I lost my library card when I called you this afternoon, and this boy was in the bar. Bar? Do you mean to tell me you went into a bar to make a phone call? It was the only phone I could find, Mother. I knew you'd be worried. Really, Miranda, when will you ever grow up? Any time you'll let me, Mother. What do you want? Here's your card. You could have mailed it. I know, but I wanted to deliver it in person. Why? Well, I wanted to tell you how sorry I was about what happened this morning. It won't happen again. Okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, goodbye, Miranda. But what, what's your name? It's Jerry. Jerry Dunn, that's my name. You're cold. Yeah, but that's nothing. I'm used to it. Your teeth are chattering and... Please, come in. This is just like an ad. Do you live here all the time? You know, I mean, uh, on the weekdays, too? This is my home. Oh, yeah. It's real nice. Won't you come into the living room? Would you like to sit down? Well, maybe I shouldn't. I might get it all dirty. Don't talk like that. Okay. This is nice and cozy. It's like a reserved seat in a movie. And you're the show. Can I offer you something? Some tea or hot chocolate? Would you like some hot chocolate? Yeah, I'd like some hot chocolate. It won't take a minute. This is only the second cup of chocolate I had in my whole life. The first time, I was a little kid, I remember, and it was a birthday treat. Hey, what day's today? The 25th. The day after tomorrow is my birthday again. Isn't that funny? Yes. Why don't you have some cookies? Yeah. 
The way that walking, it always gives me an appetite. Ain't that your old man there? Yes. But he's not an old man. Well, maybe not. What I meant was he was your old man. I think I've seen him someplace before. Isn't he a big shot lawyer on a city council? Yes. That's a big job. Yeah, yeah. Could I have a smoke? Of course. I forgot to stop and buy some. But you forgot to eat your dinner, too. And your overcoat. You probably forgot to take a bus and walked all the way here. Okay, so I haven't got any money, and I'm broke. And I come over here because I knew you were going to be alone tonight, and I want to hit you on top of that stupid head of yours. Now, why don't you get on the phone and call the police? Go ahead, why don't you? Because I know you didn't come here to rob me. How do you know? Look at me. You can see I'm no good. When I asked your name, you told me. I could have given you a phony name. But you didn't. You came here because you wanted to see me. Why do you want to spoil it? You said this morning I, I had a trim little figure that my hair crackled when I put a comb to it. How do you know that this morning I wasn't feeding you a fast line because I saw all the money in your purse? Because I'm a woman. But I prefer to believe you were telling the truth then. Truth? Me tell the truth. You ask anybody that knows me if they can believe a word I say, you know what they'll tell you? They'll tell you that they don't even trust me with giving them the time of the day. Why are you telling me these awful things, Mr. Dunn? Mr. Dunn. Holy smokes. Mr. If you just wanted inside this house, well, you're inside now. Why don't you hit me over the head and grab everything you can? Here, take this. It seemed to appeal to you. You can take everything in the house and I won't even call the police. Well, why don't you? You think you're tough. You said yourself you're no good. You shut up. All my life, everybody's telling me how no good I am. I know I'm no good. Ever since I get out of that reform school, it's... Why were you sent there? I stole a watch off some kid in school. Anyhow, when I get out, my friends wouldn't even talk to me. You know why? Because they weren't allowed to. About your birthday, Jerry. Would you like to go out with me? Come on, you, you don't mean that. We could go to a movie, have a nice dinner together. Sure, it's nothing too expensive for Jerry Dunn. Well, I... Or we could just go for a walk. And talk. What will we talk about? What do friends usually talk about? Friends? Okay. <laughs> well, at least we had a nice drive. Yeah. Oh, hello, Mother. Hello, Miranda. You're home early. Is anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong. The mayor couldn't be there. He's ill, so they canceled the dinner. This is Jerry Dunn, the gentleman who returned my library card. Are you? Oh, the young man from the bar. Do you work there? No. Oh, just sort of hang around, as they say. Well, it was awfully kind of you to bother. Here, buy yourself a drink. Don't you want it? Well, I didn't do it for a tip, Mrs. Applelon. I was just trying to make a play for your daughter because I like the way she's built. She's a doll. Jerry. Jerry, I'm awfully sorry. Just forget it. What about your birthday? Forget that, too. Forget the whole thing. Gilby. Hey, yeah, what now? I'm about to smoke. Okay. Hey, what's got into you since yesterday? Ah, uh, it's nothing. Hello, Jerry. What do you want? I want to wish you a happy birthday. Okay, thanks, but it ain't till tomorrow. 
But it'll be tomorrow in a few hours. I don't think I can wait that long. I have to get back home. Sneaked out when he weren't looking, huh? Yes. Couldn't we sit down for a minute? No, no, we better go outside. You know, you shouldn't be here. Why? Well, it's not healthy for you to be seen with me. I don't care. But I do. So you better go. Many happy returns, Jerry. What's that? Well, open it. I don't want it. We can at least look and see what it is. Do you like it? It's all gold. It must have cost a lot. I wanted you to have it. Why? So that people can ask you for the time of the day? Okay, ask me. What's the time, Jerry? It's too late, Miranda. I'll put it on. Good night, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. What do you want? Nothing. Just drop by and say hello. So now you said it. Why do you have to be so unfriendly? Look, you've been circling around me for years as if you were worried I'm going to make a slip. Only you're not really worried. You're just waiting for me to fall flat on my face. But I'm not going to oblige you. Where'd you buy this? It was a... It was a present from a friend. I'm relieved, Jerry. There are so many robberies on the books, I wouldn't like to see you get mixed up in one of them. So if you'll just tell me the name and address of your friend, we'll be all squared away. It's none of your business. You know it is. Unless you come up with a name, it won't work, so let's have it. I got no comments for you. Look, either you tell me and we'll be pals again, or you'll come with me. I ain't telling you nothing. All right, Jerry, if that's the way you feel. Come on. Come on. Done, please. Well, uh, who's calling? A friend. I just want to wish him a happy birthday. Well, it isn't going to be. He was just picked up by the cops. Well, why? What did he do? Well, he had a very fancy watch on him, and he wouldn't tell where he got it. It's down to headquarters, I guess. Thank you. Miranda. Miranda. I saw your light on, and I wondered. Where are you going at this hour? I'm going downtown, Father. Please don't try to stop me. But Miranda, you can't Wilson, do... what is it? What are you two doing? The boy who was here last night's been arrested. I have to go to the police. The police? Miranda! Why would you go to the police? What could you do there? They found a valuable watch on him. I gave it to him for his birthday. What? Oh, Miranda, how could you? I'll explain later. I have to go now. You stay here and listen to me. There's no use yelling at me, Father. Oh, I'm sorry, Miranda. I know you mean well. But you just don't know what you're doing. You can't go to the police. Think of the headlines. They'll say Abelard's daughter is giving away watches to thieves. Oh, Mother. Think, Miranda. Your father's an important man. He has enemies. He's vulnerable. Think. I am thinking of Jerry in jail. Let's not over-dramatize it. We don't know that he's in jail. All he has to do is tell them where he got the watch. Don't worry, Father. He won't tell. We'll soon find out. Look, Jerry, why should we torture each other when we could live happily ever after? Just give me the name, will you? I'm getting awfully tired. Then why don't you go to bed? <phone rings> Lieutenant Manson speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Abelard. Yes, he is. Why? I'm interested in the case. Uh huh, I see. Well, I'll come down first thing in the morning. Thank you, Lieutenant. 
You see, I told you. Yes, you did. But don't worry, I'll get him out anyway. You'll see that your father has a few tricks up his sleeve. But that's not what he needs. Tricks he knows. Now he's innocent and he's got to be released because he hasn't done anything, not because of your tricks. What you call tricks, Miranda, are perfectly legitimate procedures. But he's not waiting for legal procedure, he's waiting for me. I'm sure this isn't the first time he's been arrested. Maybe not. But this time he's there because he's trying to protect me. And you too, Mother. Don't you see? Here we are doing absolutely nothing. Your father's trying to do something constructive. Constructive for whom? Do you think it's constructive for him if I let him down? Is that the right thing to do? Just because people may gossip? Oh, what am I going to do, Daddy? What am I going to do? Is what happens to him that important to you? But what does it matter? You're not doing it for me. You're doing it for him because he's a human being. You may not understand this, darling, but I can't do it for him. I'm a human being, too. I'm doing it for you. We'll go to the police together. I love you, Daddy. All right, so you didn't steal it, so somebody gave it to you. Now tell me this, why would anybody give you a watch like this? Because you got beautiful eyes? Yeah, because I got beautiful eyes, that's right. Don't tell me it was a dame. I ain't telling you nothing. Woman? Yeah, just to be sociable. I gave you the watch. I ain't smoking. Hello, Lieutenant. Mr. Abelard, how are you? Hello, Jerry. You little dope. Lieutenant, I'm representing Mr. Dunn here. I don't think you can hold him. You got a writ? This is my daughter, Miranda. Go ahead, tell him. Jerry's a friend of mine. I gave him the watch for his birthday. Here's the sales slip. I bought it today. I see. May I talk to you a moment alone? Certainly, right in here. You can go home soon, Jerry. Yeah, I'll be glad to get out of here. When am I going to see you again? Why do you want to see me, Miranda? Didn't I cause you enough trouble? We're friends, aren't we? Yeah, sure, we're friends. On the way here, my father said he'd get you a job if you like. That's real nice of your father. You don't seem very happy about it. What's wrong? Well, what do you want me to say, Miranda? Look at me, I'm reformed. You think if I go to work and save my money and buy all new clothes and everything, I'll be full of good, clean fun and, and smell like violets? It ain't that easy. I'm still Jerry Dunn with a lot of bad memories that you just can't wash right down the sink and be through with it. They ain't very pretty memories, but that's all I got this minute. Is it? Is it all? Uh, no, there's something else since tonight. What's that, Jerry? I used to think if you had brown hair and brown eyes and were born with a no-good soul, that's the way you were all your life, but, but that ain't so. Well, Miranda, everything's all straightened out. You just have to sign this paper. Jerry, you're free to go. Good luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Appleman. And if you want to see me about a job, just drop in at my office any time. Thank you. Here's your watch, Jerry. Sorry for all the trouble. No trouble. It's a pleasure. Good night, Miranda. Good night, Jerry.